Whether we are there or not, ITSP Magazine still gets the best stories. Plenty of conferences and events spark our curiosity and allow us to start conversations with some of the world's brightest minds. In person or virtually, Sean Martin and Marco Cipelli go on location and sit down with them at the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society. Together, we discover what the synergy of these three elements means for the future of humanity. And here you are, you're very welcome to our first episode on location. Uh, brand story with our good friends from Square S Vivek. It's good to see you. Uh, likewise, you know, it's been it's been two and a half months, but it feels like <laughs> yesterday. Thanks so much for having me on the show once again. Uh, it's always a pleasure. And uh, this time in Las Vegas yeah. for Black Hat, obviously people <laughs> can see the uh, the backdrop here all the way from Singapore. A, a nice, <laughs> nice journey, maybe a few minutes in the flight. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you have a nice booth downstairs. So we're going to come down there uh, shortly and meet some of the other team because I've seen all the posts where uh, a good number of the team has, has yes. come to Las Vegas to engage with customers and partners and all that good stuff. So um, let's just dive into it. So I'm going to ask people to listen to the other episodes to get, get a kind of a broad background, but maybe just the elevator pitch uh, for what SquareX is all yeah, about. Yeah. So, you know, SquareX is building a browser native security product which detects, mitigates, and threat hunts web attacks which are happening against you know enterprise employees when they're online. And we do all of this in real time. That's an, an important space, which we've talked about uh, a bit before. Yeah. Um, where I want to start is, obviously Black Hat is known for its research, DEF CON even more so, and I know you're, actually, you're speaking at, at DEF CON. And I think if somebody's in the CISO role or a practitioner role, they, they probably know where their strengths are, where their weaknesses are, but there might still be a sense of false security. So without sharing too much, because I don't want to ruin the DEF CON uh, yeah. talk that you're doing, but what, <laughs> what, what's going on there? Yeah, so you know, Vegas is Sin City, as they call it. <laughs> and what the talk is about is uh, the seven sins of secure web gateways or, or SASE SSE solutions. Yeah, yeah. Of course, is I didn't it call- the seven OSI sins? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I've, I've named the talk Breaking Secure Web Gateways for Fun and Profit. And really what the talk is going to be about is secure web gateway SASE SSE solutions have now been around for over a decade, I think. Uh -huh. And that is really where, to your point, you know, people have this false sense of security that these cloud proxies are able to detect and block web attacks happening against their employees when they're online. Now, unfortunately, you know, these proxies are looking at network traffic to infer application layer attacks. And what SquareX has done, you know, very systematic, thorough research, is we've shown over 25 different bypasses, which are all because of architectural limitations. Yeah. So, what this means not is one. not one, not 25 two. plus, yeah. 20. And, and the big reason we did that is if you just talk about one or two, hmm. a lot of times the vendors will come back and basically say, you know what, like this one or two, either we don't care, or here you go, here is a little band-aid fix, right? right? We, have a, we have a mitigation. Exactly. <laughs> but if you go with 25 plus and then just overall point to the fact that, look, we could just keep going on and on, and this is only possible because of architectural issues, then it becomes abundantly clear that SWGs and SASE SSE, mm -hmm. when it comes to solving web threats, is, is probably useless. Right. The most worrisome thing that we're going to point out is this ends up breaking a lot of the SLAs that these companies promise their customers, including one which basically says, we will detect 100% with 100% probability any known malware. And we will actually show in the talk that known malware Mm. gets bypassed, you know, with the with the attacks that we are developing. Yeah, I, where do I go with that? I mean, just the fact that uh, the claim was made might shift me to a different vendor anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but sadly, uh, sadly, we, we get we're presented with options and we make our choices. Hopefully, yeah. the hopefully the vendor lives up to their their uh, agreements. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> sounds like not in every case. So. I presume you'll talk a little bit about how how what you do at SquareX tackles that problem. I mean, do you want to do that quickly now? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So I think how did we land upon this research is the fact that you know we were looking at a lot of web threats on the client side, 
and we quickly figured that many of these could only be solved if you had a browser native security product and that's when we realized that these proxies were like wide open so what squarex really does is because of the fact that we sit in the browser we are able to look at all the rich dom events you know browser events user interactivity and we take all of that and entirely on the client side put them into machine learning algorithms so that we can do all of this detection entirely locally without even having to depend you know uh, on the cloud in any way and that is what makes this so scalable because now imagine millions of different endpoints are all individually capable once the policies are pushed right. via the squarex product to go about figuring all of this out so the first question i'm certain people ask yeah. following that description is all right so there's machine learning running in my browser at my endpoint now correct the the user experience must get impacted right yeah so that's a that's a great question so i think you know in recent times newer technologies have come for example web assembly and every major browser now supports it and web assembly actually allows us to run you know native code which previously used to be c libraries and all of that but in the context of the browser so the browsers have ensured that these wasm modules run in an extremely lightweight way okay very very fast so in all the benchmarking including those of the browser vendors themselves clearly shows that this is very lightweight also interestingly you know john if you think about it what is the workload when it comes to you know each of these squarex extensions is running an individual user so an individual user is like 20 25 open tabs generally focused on one tab and maybe flipping between a few so this isn't a very heavy workload to monitor from the perspective of a wasm module which is already running at you know native speed okay and uh yeah cuz i'm picturing my browser i'm i'm lucky if i only have 25 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but but to your point i think i'm i'm typically working in one or two and i might over yeah. let's also point out the fact that it's open for a long time yeah. right yeah. and i might flip between one one and another that i opened last week or two weeks before yeah so i presume you you sit resident in that exactly. regardless right exactly. even it's machine sleeping yeah. and yeah. opening and all yeah. that So we deploy as a browser extension, and what browser extensions can do is individually look at every single tab which is running. So we can monitor everything happening in the tab, uh, intercept it, block it, isolate it, and do a bunch of stuff. So even if the tab is inactive, maybe even for a week or a month, but the moment it becomes active once again, we are still running there. Okay. So there are no limitations when it comes to you know active, inactive, incognito mode, uh, kind of work across all of that. Right. So the the other scenario, let, let's be honest, the, the the point we're really talking about here is a threat finds its way to yeah. the browser. Yeah. And something happens. What's the user experience when they actually are under attack or something's Correct. at risk? Correct. So if you look at organizational policies primarily, one is to stop bad behavior and bad behavior is you know employees let's say copy pasting something into chat GPT or trying to upload a file to get a summary things like that. Right. and the second is of course attacks themselves right which is spear phishing session hijacking things like that identity attacks and what not so once these policies are pushed what ends up happening is if an attack is underway we block access to that page where probably the attack is being orchestrated and the user ends up getting an alert which basically says hey you are under attack we blocked it the administrator can now look at the entire attack reconstructed using attack graphs uh you know another technology which we are deploying called attack vision and a bunch of other things so this way what happens is we stop it real time the administrator on the other side ends up getting a complete picture of what happened and that makes it easy for them to go about creating better internal user awareness uh, and at the very same time also know what you know threat actors are trying to do against the organization right So how does this uh let's shift and speak to security leaders the CISO and and their their leadership team. Yeah. Um building out a program. I mean we we all everybody's pretty much unless it's a brand new company starts with some legacy program. Yeah. They come in and and refactor it to based on their experiences and new technologies, new risks and what not. How does a strategy and a program need to change perhaps to adopt what you're yeah no that's a great using. question so the best part is given browser security itself as a field is in its nascency 
at this point in time, there isn't any overlap with other technologies. So the browser is a blind spot. So if you go to most CISOs and ask them, hey, what's happening in the browser? They'll basically say, we don't know. Because endpoint security isn't really looking into the browser at this point. And if you have cloud proxies, all you get is the point URLs that they're visiting. So if somebody had to roll this out very simply, they could just roll it out with a group policy and the browser extension you know, just gets enabled and can automatically report back apply policies and all of that. So what we've seen with our existing customers is generally within just a few hours, you can deploy this enterprise-wide. Okay. And will the, will the end user recognize that that's happened or it's kind of it's a, yeah. completely Yeah, so end user would yeah. know nothing about it. Okay. Uh, if you know, we go ahead and show the extension icon, then he knows maybe a new extension is installed. But I mean, that's just a small thing which lights okay. up somewhere in the browser which most people don't even care about. Would they have to participate in installing? Absolutely not. Okay. It's completely autonomous, automatic, you know, it just happens by itself. Uh, the only time that they would end up noticing is, you know, if they've done a, a bad behavior right. or someone's <laughs> been attacking them. Yeah. Okay. Which are both <laughs> scenarios. Yeah. So we want to minis minimize the impact or completely eliminate the impact yeah. on the end user. And we could stop the conversation there, but guess what? Yeah. IT yeah. ops, security ops, um, they could be impacted as well. So what's, what's the new world with browser security enabled look like? for them, IT and security? Yeah, so, so I think when it comes to the IT and security teams, of course this is a new frontier, right? Which means even if you're pushing these events and all of that, they need to be able to interpret this in the context of you know events which are happening. And of course there's a little bit of training which goes in there because of the fact that you know most of these individuals may not yet even understand many of these browser attacks. And that's what we've okay. seen in the early deployments is to an average security person, if you say, hey, SSO and SAML attacks or identity attacks happening mm -hmm. in the browser, uh, most of them haven't really seen how that can even be caught because again, it's a blind spot today. Right. So and it's not an alert they're used to. Exactly. <laughs> so I think that is really where what we've tried to do is see if we can map to things like Mitre and all of that, mm -hmm. where even though the attack itself might be very nuanced from the perspective of you know running in the browser, a client-side attack and all of that, for somebody to understand this is easier, so it's a simple example. Please, yeah. Let's say there is a malicious extension uh, which one of the users has ended up installing and we detect that and that malicious extension was stealing credentials as you're you know, surfing the web when you go to different websites. So what we do is we just map this to a credential stealer. Okay. So Something they're exactly. familiar with. They're course, familiar yeah. with, right? Yeah. So typically, and hopefully have a playbook and a exactly. response plan. Yeah. Exactly. So we are trying to do that. Of course, there are certain attacks where there isn't such a parallel, and that's really where there's going to be a net new learning. Uh, but for what it's worth, what we've seen is people enjoy that because all of a sudden they feel like they've uncovered something new, they're learning something new. Yeah. And one of the things I like to kind of ask is, so new alerts, um, the last few weeks I've been looking at measurement metrics and yeah. what does success look like. So. How does a, a CISO know that they're succeeding yeah. with ScoreX? That they're actually, well, I presume they're going to get more alerts and hopefully they respond properly, but <laughs> any, other, any other metrics or things they, can, they yeah. can look to? So so the way we've kind of looked at is, we go in and a lot of times, of course, I'll, I'll break the CISO audience up into a few. Okay. The ones who are skeptical, right? They're like, hey, you know, we don't need this visibility. That's really where we basically say, why don't you just turn the visibility on for free? And within a week, they actually come back and tell us these are all of these new things that they're looking at and what is this, right? Yeah. What is this really happening on chatgpt.com? And that is really when we go in and basically say, look, this is bad behavior or attacks which have been happening, which you've been completely blind to till this point. And that's really where a light bulb goes off and, you know, and people are like, hey, how do we stop this now? Right. Now, the second you know, audience is who's technical, who understands this, so in that case, what we try to do is understand their organizational priorities or attacks that are already happening. So there was one customer who came in and said, oh, you know what, our uh, executives are getting attacked via a SharePoint attack, which is really somebody sends them a valid SharePoint link, they click on it, finally go to a credential stealing page. And because you started from a site that you trust, SharePoint.com, and anybody can create SharePoints, right. not just your organization. Yeah. People tend to believe that you know they were trying to open a doc via SharePoint, and now they need to log into you know Microsoft yeah. Online or whatever. 
And that's really where in those cases we go in and say, okay, is this the attack? Let's model it with SquareX and show you how SquareX can block it. Okay. Yeah, the uh, other thing I want to touch on is I think some of the other offerings require some connection back to, I'll call a home base, right? Right. Through, through some tunnel or through some yeah. firewall. Yeah. Um, how does SquareX handle I'm thinking of the remote yeah. worker where yeah. they're not logging in through a VPN. Exactly, right? exactly. Yeah. So, so the good thing is, you know, because SquareX runs entirely within the browser, uh, so because SquareX runs entirely within the browser, uh, at any given point, even if there is a loss of internet connectivity, it is still running. If the user is on an intranet, it's still running. If they're behind a captive portal at an airport where they still haven't logged on to the network, it's still running. When he finally connects back to the internet, we sync our logs, we sync back events, attack detections, and all of that. Okay. Now, unlike a web proxy, where if there is an internet connectivity loss, right. everything is lost, right? Right. There's absolutely no way now that the proxy has access to the web traffic, which means it can't scrub, you know, or at least try to look for any attack patterns. Okay. So we've specifically built it in a way that even large periods of time where there is internet disruption, we can still go ahead, store the events locally in the browser local storage, which is pretty much as big as the disk space yeah. itself. Yeah, because I would imagine some, some sophisticated attacks might look for that disconnect exactly. event and then do their exactly. do their deeds yeah, yeah, yeah. And, hope for the, and then hope for the connection to come back. Absolutely. Um, I also want to touch on the, uh, the, the toolkit. I think yeah. you uh, tell us a little bit about that that yeah. you're launching. So, so I think, you know, seeing is believing, right? Okay. I mean, uh, I could go up on stage, talk for 45 minutes, you know, main stage DEF CON and say, these are 25 different sins of secure web gateways. This is how this is broken, blah, 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 right? And people will enjoy it and forget about it. So having been in cybersecurity research now 20 years, what I found is the moment you give people the right tools to test it themselves, now you've empowered them. Right. And that is really where you know what we are doing is we don't want these attacks to just be a theoretical discussion with some supposedly canned demos, right? Because I mean that's that's the most that we can show in 45 minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you don't want vendors to come back and basically say these were staged demos or, mm -hmm. or whatnot. So what we are going to do at the very end is we are going to give out an attack toolkit which any organization can actually use and test against their SAS ESSE solutions. Additionally, we are also putting up a website called browser.security. So if you don't even want to set up the toolkit yourself, you can just go to browser.security, click and see those attacks just happen against your network while you are on a SAS ESSE, uh, you know, vendor pipe. And for those wondering that there's the payload's not there, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a method with which... Uh, In some cases, there is a payload, oh, okay. but we warn you not to execute it. Okay. Because what we want to kind of like show is known malware mm -hmm. can be fully bypassed using the attacks that we okay. put out uh, through the SASE SSC secure web gateways. Yeah. Playing with fire, I love it. <laughs> Well, you're but, in security, but I mean, you know. Guess who else is playing with fire? Yeah. And then they have nothing to lose. Yeah, that's true. Right? <laughs> There's so many interesting so, uh, things happening yeah. lately. Yeah. yeah, the bad actors. All right, well, let's um, let's, <coughs> let's wrap up here, uh, Vivek. I, I know you have a few days here in Las Vegas, here at Black Hand and DEF CON. Um, what would be the, the final message to security leaders yeah. who have heard what you said and maybe want to take the next step? I think, you know, the attackers have realized that all employees are spending over 90, 95% of their time on the browser. Yeah. And hence, that is the application to target because that is also the gateway you know, of everything in and out of the computer at this point in time. And that is really where I think there's been a lot of vendors speak about these proxies and all that they can help and, and scrub traffic. It's important to do your own tests and diligence. And hopefully people will start to realize that the best place to run a security product is a place where you can have 100% visibility of everything happening. And when it comes to client-side web attacks, the only place is the browser. Yeah. And now browsers are powerful enough that we can actually have a browser-native security product similar to SquareX. Yeah, I love it. And uh, yeah, so visibility, I think we talked about this before. Visibility and context and, and yeah. knowledge, yeah. right, can help you respond and, and protect. And I think the other point that 
that I keep hearing is that there's no impact to the end user and and the uh, the information and the operations of ScoreX. Yeah. Don't impact negatively the IT and security folks, but in Correct. fact empower them as well. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. That's the idea. Well, always a pleasure, Rebek. Yeah. To see Likewise, you. Likewise, thanks uh, so much for having me on the show once again. Wish you uh, wish you the best for uh, this week and Thank a you. great talk and and. I don't know man, how many thousands of downloads <laughs> of the toolkit and uh, browser.security uh, clicks you get, but uh, I think we might need to do the same, Marco. Have, have a check. I, I'm not. I'm not certain that uh, Marco's doing the right stuff in his browser, <laughs> so I'm gonna have to run some of those tests. But anyway, thank you all for listening and watching this brand story with SquareX. Please do visit their brand directory page and connect with Vivek and the team. If you're in Vegas still, go visit the booth. They have a pretty good team here, uh, all the way from Singapore. And uh, Marco and I are going to go down and say hi to everybody as well. So thanks, Rebecca. Thanks. Uh, Thank you. Thank you so Square much for having team. me on the show. Thank you. We'll see you all soon. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Sean and Marco's On Location event coverage conversations. Please take a moment to give the show a good rating and leave a comment. Remember to share this podcast with your friends, family, and colleagues. Come back for more conversations and follow Sean Martin and Marco Cipelli as they continue their journey toward redefining cybersecurity and society.